Well, welcome back to another video. This video, we're going to talk about video laryngoscopy. Uh, it is truly game changing what these devices are doing and what we're seeing uh, specifically in emergency medicine. Uh, we are now seeing uh, that uh, in kind of review in emergency medicine of airways, that two thirds of first uh, attempts are now made with a video laryngoscope. Um, and we're seeing higher success rates, higher first pass success rates. Uh, and it's now crossed the threshold uh, now where resources like UpToDate are advising that first attempts should be made with a video laryngoscope um, unless there's another reason uh, that the operator sees that uh, would not be as useful. Uh, so very much changing our practice and should be changing our practice. Now, video laryngoscope historically was blocked sometimes in, uh, in EMS systems, probably wrongly, uh, by prices where uh, devices. Now, the price of devices has greatly dropped uh, uh, where uh, uh, this King Vision with a hyperacute is much more reasonable in price. Uh, in this eye view uh, video laryngoscope that's actually disposable, um, and has a very bright light, which is wonderful, and a great reasonable view as well, uh, is only in Canada $130 Canadian through SANS, which is just game changing. So there's no reason you shouldn't have some form of a video laryngoscope uh, on, uh, on your uh, ambulance or wherever you're practicing as a paramedic. Now, when we think of video laryngoscope, we want to think uh, about the differences, probably starting off the differences from direct uh, and direct uh, with a Macintosh blade. Now, this uh, eye view, uh, as we hold it up, uh, and I was, will be speaking of the business end, the end that goes into the patient's mouth is what we're concerned about. You can see that these are uh, virtually the same angle the, uh, as far as the ends where the uh, the curve uh, uh, and the approach uh, that that blade will be making is very similar. Uh, and with a Macintosh style blade, uh, we're going to be able to use it just like a Macintosh uh, direct laryngoscopy. Often the camera will get us a, a little bit better view than we may have got just by visualization through, but only slightly. Uh, compared to uh, the hyperangulated, now if we compare these two hyperangulated, I'll turn this light off and try to keep me from killing the battery, but you can see how those from the tip that goes in the patient's mouth, how those are very different uh, laryngoscope blades. Uh, this is referred to as a hyperacute angle, uh, and this would be referred to as a Macintosh style. Now, George Kovach has, uh, has some great videos over on aimairway.com. Uh, um, and he, he, he's kind of reviewed through these and sees that there's, uh, there's no kind of one standard. You can pick up one hyperacute and the blade slightly different, the magnification of the camera slightly different, the angle of the camera is a little bit different. Um, so just because you read, oh, this is a Macintosh, it could be slightly different than another manufacturer. So once again, I'd encourage you to get comfortable with the, the de devices that you'll be using. Uh, the literature has been showing that the hyperacute angle is really, really good for improving your view, um, uh, but the, the, the Macintosh also is helpful. Uh, in my uh, own experience, I found that the, with the hyperacute angle, uh, that we're able to get a better visualization of the glottic opening more easy because this is a, a see around the corner device. Rather than trying to lift uh, the, what I want to picture, that corner that's created from your tongue down to your high bone and down to your larynx, this corner that we're going around, Normally, when we go in with a Macintosh blade, we lift up and we're looking to lessen that corner. So uh, we're lifting that corner out of the way. This here device, uh, a hyperacute angle, is a C around the corner. So if you picture this sitting in, is that I don't have to lift up the tongue as much uh, to be able to get a view. Now, obviously, as I lift the tongue up, that will improve my view. Um, uh, but uh, I, this is more of a see around the corner. Now I will say with the hyperacute angle, it can be more challenging to actually uh, place the tube, not to get the visualization of the glottic opening, but actually get the tube into place. So some manufacturers like Glidescope has a trademarked a rigid, laryngo uh, rigid um, stylet uh, that allows you to really get that tube anterior because the shape of the stylet is in a really rigid form and will maintain that form. Um, that uh, stylet, as well as uh, the stylets that we normally put in a tube, uh, we should not be advancing those into the trachea. The idea is that you get the end of the tube to the glottic opening 
and then with, uh, withdraw uh, the stylet before we advance the tube. So we'll withdraw it a couple of centimeters before we advance the tube in that distance. So hyperacute angle, easier to get the view, harder to pass the tube. With the Macintosh, uh, uh, not as easy to obtain the view, but typically easier to advance the tube. And that's because we get rid of the, the Macintosh helps less in that corner. And there's some tips that we can do uh, with the uh, with the hyperacute as well. But with the, with the Macintosh, we would just use it just like a Macintosh blade. You're gonna walk it, put it in the mouth. If you ever run into the chest uh, of a patient as you're advancing in, come in from the oblique side, rotate in, that should get us away from the chest. Remember that when we're using a laryngoscope blade, always pull in the direction of the handle. When with a, with a uh, video laryngoscope, you'll get rewarded for your bad behavior of tipping back as we lever back. But the problem is typically when we pull on the laryngoscope blade, it pulls on the entirety of the tongue. And when you tip back, you're just making contact with that tip. So it's very easy to traumatize the airway, uh, particularly around the glottic structures. I know we uh, often all hear in paramedic circles, people talking about the teeth. Yes, but you will traumatize the soft tissues well before uh, you could damage teeth. Both would be uh, poor to do. So as we insert into the mouth, we're gonna look into the mouth, walk our way down the tongue. This is with a Macintosh. We're gonna try to get into uh, the vollecula and, uh, and then lift up. And now I know you can't see, I just wanted you to be able to see as I'm using, but uh, you can't see in the screen. I'll show you with the hypercute. But we can able to get a view. And what we're pri primarily doing is lifting that tongue out of the way. So we're bringing that corner up. Now, if I need to improve my view, uh, the Kovach Kata, um, uh, Scott Weingard made uh, based on George's kind of uh, uh, teachings, uh, is the first thing is that we can do head lift. So increase our head lift. We can do external laryngeal manipulation by pushing on the thyroid cartilage. I would encourage you to manipulate that yourself, uh, get it a view that you want, and then take an assistance hand and move that around. The other thing is by manual. So taking your learner scope and pulling up with two hands, we can get ac uh, uh, more lift. Uh, and then from there, we can go down and scoop. If it's a, a Macintosh blade, we can scoop, uh, we'll get closer. And if it's a hyperacute angle, pulling back, uh, it works better. So that's with a Macintosh. A Macintosh typically is harder to get the view, Macintosh video laryngoscope, harder to get the view, but easier to pass the tube. Now, when we're uh, advancing the tube with uh, any video laryngoscope, we need to be aware of our airway access. So if I get into position, I can meet resistance here. And as you are picturing um, in that uh, glottic opening, we can be kind of the head, the oropharyngeal axis is this way uh, and the laryngeal axis this way. So we can have a kind of steep uh, curve that we're running into. So we can bump on the arytenoid cartilage or as we advance, we can get caught up on the um, uh, tracheal rings. So if we're caught on the tracheal rings, which would be something like this, if I can show you with my fingers, if we rotate the tube uh, clockwise, that will help us slide along. Whereas uh, having that leading tip uh, or the bevel catching on the tracheal rings can cause holdup. I encourage you not to have the stylet in place as we're advancing it. So what that would look like is the stylet uh, was in place to get to the glottic opening. Uh, and as we advance into position, we get the tip just to where the glottic opening, then just pull back that a few centimeters as you advance that tube into position. That will also help from getting held up on the tracheal rings. Okay, let's pull out the hypercute, uh, which you'll be able to see better. Uh, but uh, the Macintosh is a great device, particularly because if you know how to use a Macintosh uh, blade uh, with direct laryngoscopy, the learning curve to be able to learn this is much easier because it's very similar use. Um, uh, the, with the hyperacute angle, uh, there's some things that we need to be aware of as we insert this in the myth. Uh, so we'll insert to the oblique. And when we're putting any video laryngoscope, uh, when we're inserting a first in the mouth, we'll insert into the mouth uh, and be looking at the mouth till the, we lose the tip of the blade. Then we'll turn our eyes to the screen or to the screen. We're going to slide down the tongue, remembering that we don't have to control the tongue as much uh, with, a, with a video laryngoscope because um, the, where we're trying to see isn't through the mouth. Uh, it's 
uh, down through the camera. So we're just going to follow the tongue down, watching uh, the anterior surface of the patient until we find the epiglottis, get down to the epiglottis, and then be able to lift up. Now, uh, a temptation can be to go in with a hyperacute angle blade and get this kind of a view. Now, you'll watch as I kind of pull back here a bit, do you see what happens to the glottis itself? I actually move the glottic airway quite significantly uh, superior from my perspective or more anterior, which is going to make a more difficult curve to get to. So when I'm advancing the tube, uh, even with the channel device, um, it, it, what we can do, it can be immensely frustrating, is that we just get to watch ourselves intubate that stomach or the esophagus over and over again. So better uh, with a hyperacute angle than this view for placing the tube would be to back up get your view, uh, get back in what George Kovacs would call a 50-50 view, where I see 50% of my glottic opening and the glottic structures is only taking up 50% of my screen. Now you can notice as I rotate my, my uh, blade around inside the mouth, it acts very much like a periscope that I can turn from side to side. So I'd like to get that into the middle of my screen as best I can. And we would be happy with a 50-50 view. Now, if you picture this here 50-50 view, if you watch uh, the thyroid cartilage on this mannequin, it does not move nearly as much, which means that it does, we're not creating a falsely really sharp uh, angle to have to go around to place the tube. So now when I have that 50-50 view, if I use this channel on the device, it kind of slides in there quite nicely as we uh, advance that tube in. Now, as you're advancing the tube, if you meet any resistance, you can pop it at the channel and rotate it to the side as we advance down uh, to an appropriate depth. Now, once that tube's in place, you can by all means go down and get that nice close view uh, now that we're no longer trying to place that tube, but rather confirm that the tube is in place. Please be cautious that we're only pulling in the vector of the handle, in the direction of the handle, and not pulling back. If we're pulling back, we're going to cause significant trauma either to the teeth, but particular to the soft tissues down uh, in, in the around the glottic structures, now, now on top of the epiglottis. So with uh, the uh, hyperacute angle, we're going to look in the mouth, insert the blade, rotate around. Now, I can also use the hyperacute angle if I was having trouble and the patient was particular anterior. Let's say the laryngeal cart or the thyroid cartilage was really close to the base of the tongue, so not a lot of space when we measured that 332 and evaluate as part of lemon. Um, so we have a really uh, superior uh, uh, laryngeal structures. We could use a bougie, which works really well. And another thing that you can do to help advancing tubes is you can get way over into the right side, into the right cheek. That's going to allow us to have less of a curve as we head into uh, the trachea. Um, so you can have an assistant pull the cheek out uh, for you. Um, so when I advance this uh, bougie, so the, the, as I'm inserting, the first step is insert the laryngoscope. We insert it into the mouth. Then look in the camera as we work down to get the view that we want. Then you're going to look in the mouth as you put the bougie in. You can stay over to the right side if you wish. Then we're going to turn our eyes to the camera, advance that uh, bougie down. If we meet resistance, we'll just rotate, gently twist. Uh, we can go clockwise if we think we're caught um, uh, on anything else, we can go the counterclockwise. So we advance down to hit resistance, and then we're going to put our uh, bougie or put our endotracheal tube over the top. Now, of course, get an assistant to help you with this as you're using this. And I have another video on uh, bougie uh, using a bougie if you want more clarification around the bougie, as I'm struggling to get the bougie on here myself. But your assistant would do this for you. So once we're kind of into this position here. We can hold a little bit of anterior traction up as long as we've got a far away view because that's going to lessen this curve as long as we're not too close uh, to the thyroid cartilage. So we're, we can rotate that, tip that over so we don't get caught on the uh, retinoid cartilage uh, counterclockwise as soon as we're through the uh, through uh, the glottic uh, opening, then we can rotate that counterclockwise to make sure we don't get, uh, or, sorry, clockwise. So when we're going through the glottic opening, I think we might get caught up on the retinoid cartilage. We can rotate that counterclockwise when we are trying to avoid once we're past the vocal cords and getting uh, meeting any resistance, we can rotate uh, clockwise. We'll get you there. So those are the things. Now, I would encourage you with both devices, 
that as my camera has moved on me, I'll move that camera down, hopefully. Maybe not. Sorry about this. It's like, I need a cameraman. There we go. Um, the uh, With both devices, using the Kovach Kata really helps improve our view. With the hyper-acute angle, the, the steps that you're going to walk through is inserted in the mouth. Go down, try to get the best view you can, uh, get into the volacula. Then we can do head lift, external laryngeal manipulation, uh, bimanual uh, laryngoscopy. Then if we have a, um, uh, a hyperacute angle, we'll want to make sure that we'll pull back. So make sure we only have that 50-50 view rather than if we have this kind of a view, which will be great to view but difficult to insert. If we were using a Macintosh style blade, we'd re we could go in and pick up the epiglottis because we're not going to struggle with this curve created by being deep uh, with a hyperangulated. In fact, we'll be lifting that corner because we're lifting uh, that Macintosh blade on the entirety of the tongue uh, as we advance. So hopefully that makes things uh, uh, better. I really encourage you that if you haven't practiced uh, with uh, either of these, they are different creatures. I know they're both video laryngoscopes, but used in different ways. So hyperacute, easy uh, to get a view, more difficult to pass a tube. The things that we can do to improve that uh, is, uh, as far as passing the tube, is uh, uh, pulling back would be my first recommendation, get that 50-50. Lower the head down, so relax your view, get back to closer to sniffing position if you're really elevated. If you're using external laryngeal manipulation, uh, that can be helpful, but make sure you're not squeezing or pushing too aggressively uh, as you approach. And remember that you have uh, devices like a bougie, um, <clears throat> or if you happen to have a commercial rigid stylet to help you get anteriorly. Now, if you uh, are uh, having trouble passing the tube and you're using a hyperangulated, you can go back to a, a Macintosh video style, which you will not get as good of a view, but will be easier to pass the tube. So hopefully that's helpful and gets you started. I really recommend that you go and play with these devices, get to a simulation mannequin and play with them. That's where you're going to become more comfortable and experience those kind of tactile difficulties of advancing tube or improving view uh, and, and practicing that Kovach Kata. Until next time, we'll see you then.